today we are continuing our journey into Joshua. Um, Joshua 5, 13, and then into 6 and through 7. And what we're going to see here really happens in two parts. What you need to know is that next week we're going to take on the second part of Joshua because there's two sides to this story. And they're important, both pieces. But we're going to take on the first piece today. We're going to look at how we attack the impossible. Have you ever really wondered about how you make it through the impossible things in your life? I'm guessing you have because I wonder it all the time. But we're going to look at the impossible. But there's some things that happen in here that sometimes make you wonder, would my God really act like that? And we're going to talk about that next week. So today, we're going to focus on what God does with us in the impossible. So let's look at our scripture in Joshua 5, 13 through 6, 7. Now Joshua was near Jericho. He looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up and asked him, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Has seven priests carry the trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound of a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry the trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. So I want us to begin with a question. What is that moment? That time where the thing before you seemed nothing more than impossible. What is that time in your life, that problem in your life where you went to God and you just said, this is impossible, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot handle this any more. What is that moment for you? Some of you here today and online are thinking of about 7,000 things. Times in your life when you have just been certain there was no way you could make it from A to B. Times where you have faced mountain after mountain knowing that there was no way you could make it through the next hill that you had to climb. Some of you here today are thinking, what are you talking about those times in the past? I'm in the middle of it right now. Right now, I am struggling with all that I have just to make it to tomorrow. Right now, I can barely make it from one hour to the next. Right now, seems impossible. And for some of us, the impossible has to do with relationships, with people in our lives who we just struggle so deeply with. Some of us, it's a marriage that is falling apart at the seams. Some of those marriages fight every day, tooth and nail, just to make it. Some of the marriages are so apathetic, it's as if they're living like strangers together in the same house. And every day you think, God, how could I fix this? Because it's so past being fixable. 
Some of you are struggling financially. You don't know how you're going to make it from one meal to the next, from one house payment to the next, from one car payment to the next. For some of you, it's the loss of somebody you love desperately. Or somebody you love is sick and you don't know how you're going to make it with them through their battle. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you're the one who's sick. And every day of your life is a struggle. And you've asked God, you don't know how many times, to take this illness away from you. And you don't know how you're going to wake up tomorrow and face the same thing again. Whatever it is for you, the answer to how we make it through one minute to the next, one hour to the next, one day to the next, is the same. And I'm not saying that in the very Christian way, oh, just pray about it, or God's with you, or God has it, don't fear. Because those are very trite answers to very, very big struggles, to very big problems. The truth is that God is with us, especially for those of you who have accepted Christ into your life, who, who call yourselves believers. We have a promise that God is going to be with us. For those of you who have yet to accept Christ into your life, this is one of the benefits to asking Christ, to accepting Christ's forgiveness, to saying yes. And my encouragement to you is to really take this in and, and after everything is said and done, if you're ready to say yes, to say those words, then say a prayer, asking for forgiveness and then asking Christ into your life and then tell me about it so I can help walk you through the next steps of what's to come. Because what you're going to hear today is something that you're going to need in your life because no matter what's happening, if your troubles are in the past or if they're happening right now, guess what? We're going to face some more troubles in the future. And knowing how to handle them is key. Because God didn't promise that we're not going to have troubles. In fact, he told us. Jesus said, you're going to struggle in life. You're going to have issues in life. But the promise is, is that we will be comforted, that we will have a partner in those troubles. So what I want to look at is how the Israelites accessed the power of God in the midst of the impossible. How do we, like the Israelites, access the power of God in the middle of the impossible? So let's look at Joshua starting at the end of chapter 5. We see Joshua in Jericho, or near Jericho, it says. Now, what has happened before this, as we've seen, as we've been traveling through Joshua, is that they have finally made it. The Israelites were told generations ago through Abraham that God would give them this land flowing with milk and honey, that he would make them a people. And finally, after decade upon decade, it's coming. It's finally going to happen. They've crossed the Jordan River. They've had all of the, they've renewed their commitment to God. And I'm not going to say circumcision. Oops, I just did. Because I was told last week, I said it way too many times. And the men really um, did not like that so much. They were very uncomfortable with it. That cracked me up. I heard it from more than one person. It made me laugh. But they've had all of these events happen that prepare them for this moment. They're finally ready for their first battle because guess what? God didn't make it as easy as just handing them the land, which is one of the things we're going to talk about next week. But they're going to have to fight for this land. And so their first battle is coming up, and it's going to be the Battle of Jericho. And as Joshua looks at Jericho, I have to tell you as a leader, I would be saying, God, are you serious? Because let me tell you about Jericho. Jericho is a city that is a walled city. If you can picture it in your mind, I, Joe is so much better at picturing things than me, but when you picture it in your mind, it is basically just this fortress, an absolute fortress that is totally walled in. And it's that way on purpose so that people like the Israelites cannot come in, cannot take them. 
And right now, that fortress is completely sealed up because they know the Israelites are coming and because they fear God. Not just the Israelites. They don't fear the people, the Israelites. They fear the God of the Israelites. And so they've shut this up where normally people go in and out of the walls in Jericho. That's how they get their food. You know, all of the farmlands are typically outside of the, the walled-in city. And so the food comes in and out of the, the doors. that They have doors that allow you in. I'm sure they're not like that door, but, you know, big ways to get in. They get horses and carts and all of that stuff in and out of the city. But right now they're shut up tight. And so as Joshua looks at this fortified city, He's got to be thinking, why is this the first one, God? Why is this the first city we have to encounter? There's going to be other cities that are not fortified like this. And he's got to be thinking, how am I going to lead my men in battle? How are we going to do this together? And so as he's planning, as he's thinking about what to do, guess what happens? The commander of the Lord's army shows up. I cannot tell you how many times I've been praying and asking for the commander of lords anything to show up and tell me what to do. But that's exactly what happens, just like the burning bush with Moses. You know, how many times have you asked for that to happen in your life? I've asked for it many times. Lord, if you could please just speak to me, a bush, a donkey, whatever it is, I'll take it. Just say to me in actual words what it is that you would like for me to do, and I will do it. Can you imagine if the, the commander of the Lord's, you know, marriage counseling showed up and told you what to do, or the commander of the Lord's financial situation showed up and told you what to do? That's exactly what happens here. Joshua is looking at Jericho, wondering, how am I going to do this work? And the commander of the Lord's army shows up. And he says, first of all, Joshua, do not worry. Well, he says, take off your sandals because the place you're standing is holy, just like with the burning bush. Joshua does it. And then he says, do not worry because the, we've already, God's already handed you this city. It's already been done. It's already won. The men, the king, already yours. And I'm sure Joshua's looking at the city going, um, I don't, um, I don't. Because it's not, right? The wall, it's still fortified. The king's still in there. The people are still in there. All the work is still left to be done. It's like when we tell people, um, God's got this. God's already won the battle for you, which we know, but it doesn't help to hear it again because we don't see it ourselves. We can't see that end. We want that end, but we can't see it. And then he says, listen, this is what you're going to do. And Joshua's like, I'm ready. I'm ready. What, build trenches, um, take down the wall. What is it you want us to do? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to walk around the wall once a day, very quiet, except for the priests who are going to blow on the shofar, these ram's horns. And then you're going to go back to your camp. And then the next day you're going to do it again, then you're going to go back to your camp. And you're going to do that for six days, and then on the seventh day you're going to do it seven times, and then you're going to do, do a loud shout, and then the wall's going to fall down. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if that's what you heard from the commander of the Lord's army? Can you even begin to imagine what you would be thinking? I would be thinking, you are the craziest person on the face of the planet. I must be dreaming. I must be the craziest person on the face of the planet because this cannot be real. There is no way that that is the answer to this problem. I am a warrior. I know what it takes to win a battle, and that is not it. I'm just going to tell you right now. That's not how you win a battle. But what I know from experience is that you and I go to God asking for help. Not only asking for help, but giving him the solution to the problem. We say, I have a problem, and this is how I would like you to fix it, and this is what I want it to look like at the end, right? We give all three of them. We say, this is the problem, this is how I think it should probably be solved, and this is what I think the end should look like. Because we're humans and we're really, really smart and we're good at analyzing things, and we're good at solving problems in our head, and we're good at taking things and breaking them down and making the answer um, very rational, because we're rational human beings. And this is not a rational answer to any problem. Can you imagine going to the Lord's um, Army of Christian Counseling and having the Christian counselor tell you, you and your wife march around this wall once a day for six days, and then on the seventh day, your marriage will be fixed. 
enjoy. Can you just imagine what that would be like? But I also know from experience that every time I have desperately sought God's answer in my life and listened, the answer has never been anything normal, has never been anything typical, has never been anything that I expected. Because God's not us. God is so above and beyond what we know and what we understand. And I have to give Joshua credit here because you know what Joshua does? Joshua takes this news and he takes it seriously. As a leader of people, I know how hard it is to tell people things you know they're not going to want to hear. Joshua takes this news, not only takes it seriously, but then he goes and tells his people what God has told him. Can you imagine how hard that must have been? It's hard for me to tell you all that we're taking it week by week, that next week we might not have church in person, knowing that some of you are going to think that I'm off my rocker. Some of you are going to think that I'm too protective. Some of you are going to think I'm too liberal or too conservative or too crazy or, or that you're going to think I'm listening to the wrong news outlet. Some of you think right now that I'm crazy having church in person because it's, too, it's not safe enough. Some of you think I'm crazy because we can't sing. Some of you think I'm crazy because I'm, you know, there's this whole, whole bouquet of opinions in the world. And our opinions are always right. Right? I, I mean, I feel like that this feeling of being right must give us hormones like dopamine that flows through our heads because it feels so good to be right. And we just know that we're right. We just know that we are right. So I know that when Joshua went to his group of people and told them what they were going to do, there were thousands of people in that group who said, this man is crazy. Can you believe what he's going to ask us to do? There's no way that's going to work. That is the stupidest thing I ever heard. And they're talking at each other and they're saying all this because that's what happens with human beings. But to their credit, do you know what they did? Honestly, they did like what you guys are doing for me, which has been such a blessing. They're trusting their leader because they know that their leader is trusting God. Joshua was going to God only. And so even though they might have disagreed, even though they might have thought that their leader was absolutely off their rocker, they trusted that Joshua and God knew more than they did, or that they just trusted in God. And so they got up in the morning together as a group, and they marched around that city. Can you imagine what that sounded like? What it must have felt like to be in that experience, to march around that city, the sound of their footsteps on the pavement, the ch 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 of people marching, the silence, because none of them are saying anything, complete silence. And the sound of the ram's horn blowing this ma sound, this just deep, low sound. And that's all that's happening. All the way around this fortified city. And then they go back and, they, and then they go, to, they go back to camp. And can you imagine what's happening with the people in Jericho? What they must be thinking. I mean, the people in Jericho the first day could probably think they're crazy. I mean, what is that weirdness? Is that a parade? What is that? I mean, I don't understand what's happening, right? And then the next day, the next day things get really weird because they're doing it again? What? They're doing it again? And then the next day, and then the next day. You see, what we do in the face of a possible is what we need. We need to learn from what the Israelites did. And here's what they did. They did a combination of three things. See, when Joshua looked at the wall, 
he saw impossible and he started planning in his head just like we do as human beings. Okay, we need to build some trenches. We need to figure out how to get that door down. We probably need to get some men over the wall, maybe some rope or some strings. I don't know, I'm making this up because I'm not a warrior at all and I don't have imagination, Joe does. But he's planning all of these things and that's what we do when we have problems. We think, okay, I need to do this, I need to call her. We probably need to do some counseling. We probably need to do this, we probably should do that. And I heard that so-and-so did this or I need to call that doctor. We have all of this list of things. Sometimes the list is so big we don't do anything because we become overcome with the whole bigness of all of it. But basically, what the commander of this army is telling Joshua is that it's not by force that you're going to take this, it's by faith. It is not by force that we look at our problems and fix them, it is by faith that we fix these problems. But it's not just a, hey, have faith, it's going to be fine. It's an active faith. And let me tell you what that active faith looks like. You and I, when we are in the middle of trouble, need to picture this moment. We need to be back in Jericho with the commander. We need to be back in Jericho with the Joshua and the army. Because with Joshua and the army, you had the, the front guard, the people with weapons, and then you had the priests, and then you had the Ark of the Covenant, which was the presence of God. And then you had the rear guard, and they're marching around the city together. And as they're marching around the city together, this is what you hear. You hear that rhythm of faith, the da 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 And what they're doing together is they're believing. They're getting up every morning believing in God. They believe that God is who God says God is. That God's character is unfailable. That God is good. Da, 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 da. God is good. Da, 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 da. God loves me. Da, 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 da. God is working for my good. So I get up every day and I show up believing in the character of God. And then the next thing they're doing is that they're trusting God. Da, 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 da. Trusting that God, his ending, his fix for this is better than anything we could have chosen for ourselves. And that's so hard for us. Because like I said, when we pray, we're not only praying for God's intervention, we're praying for God's ending to look like our ending. And you know that as they're marching around these walls, they're thinking nothing's changing. The first days they march, they're thinking, oh my gosh, not, not one rock has come down. That wall looks exactly the same as it did yesterday. How is that wall going to come down in a second? They're probably figuring out for themselves how God's going to make this work but they're wrong. So every day, da, 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 da. they're believing and they're trusting. They're believing in the character of God and they're trusting that God's end to the story, God's answer to this problem is better than their own answer. And that when they hit bumps along the road, because we're going to hit bumps along the road, and God doesn't always create those bumps. In fact, God rarely creates those bumps. When those bumps get created, that God's going to work for our good in those bumps. That God's going to fight for us in those bumps. And so we get up believing, da, 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 da. God is good. God is good for me. Da, da, da. God is trusting. I can trust God. And then the last thing we believe as we are marching around that city, because that's what we're doing when we are living in the impossible, is we're marching. We're getting up every day. Da, 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 da. We are following the presence of God. As the Israelites were marching around that wall, they were following the presence of God, which is represented by the ark. And when we follow the presence of God in our life, that requires us to be connected to God. We must be praying. We must be studying scripture. And we must be living a life that reflects the character of Jesus. Living a life of justice. Living a life of kindness. 
Loving people that are hard to love is a way of connecting in our relationship with God. It's a way of finding and following the presence of God. Doing work that doesn't seem like it's connected to God, to our problems, is a way of following the presence of God and finding the answer that God has for us. Da, 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 da. Day after day, moment after moment, step after step, you and I must live an act of faith where we wake up every moment of every day, we are choosing to believe in the character of God, to trust in God's outcome, and to follow the presence of God in our lives. When the commander of the Lord's army told Joshua that the win was already done, Joshua couldn't see it. We can't see it either. But we need to actively believe, actively trust, and actively follow the presence of God so we can experience the victory that God has for us. Because otherwise, we may eke it out. We may make it through it okay. But if we want to truly experience victory, if we want to feel victory in the midst of of the battle. We must live an act of faith. It is not by force, it is by faith. And it's an active faith. So as today, as you're standing in front of a wall that you know you can't topple by yourselves, you need to march around that wall with the Israelites. Da, 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 da. Believing, trusting, following. Because in the end, that wall will fall and you will experience a victory like you've never experienced before because you have actively participated in your faith with God. That victory is waiting for you. Question is, will you show up for your faith? Let us pray. God, I thank you so much for the victories that you have already created for us. I pray for courage for everybody today who needs a victory in their life, who is gutting it out every day, just eking by. I pray for courage that they would show up believing in your goodness, trusting in the end that you have created and following your presence in the way that they live day by day. God, teach us to live an act of faith so we can live into the victories you've already created for us. It's in the name of Jesus we pray.